No, I think the number of descents have grown more recently. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure we have accurate stats. Um, I'm inclined to think that, I don't know, I, I just have a sneaking suspicion that more of my colleagues tend to disagree with me. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and I'm inclined to think that they do so wrongly as well. <laughs> but, uh, but, but no, I mean, I, d I don't know whether or not uh, that is something that we quite keep track of. I know every now and then uh, one is taken, by, taken aback sometimes by colleagues when during the course of the post-hearing conference uh, somebody says, but I disagree with that view. Uh, that sometimes poses a difficulty and I can, and, and this ties in I think to the point that Chris was making and that is uh, certainly some of us strive to do this. Um, if we have difficulties we like to put it to council. Uh, but I've noticed for whatever reason, I mean you know we've, we've got some colleagues who lack the confidence, who are somewhat more junior than uh, than Judge Nafsa and myself, and there's a tendency, for example, sometimes they tend to be a bit bashful and a bit recalcitrant, and they are somewhat just reluctant to debate with counsel. And then you go into conference and they say, well, actually, I take, I take a different view. And that can be a bit dangerous, because if you've not given counsel an opportunity to persuade you, and you arrive at a conclusion without the benefit of full debate with counsel, I think that that is dangerous, and I think that you may be well failing as an appellate court judge in, in that regard. Well, you, you go first, I'm going <laughs> No, to, to be fair, it is, it is something we've been thinking about. But you will appreciate as well, Jeremy, that when that was first mooted at the Constitutional Court, I mean, people like John Didcot sat there chomping at the bit, and counsel had barely made the first submission and, and he had dived in. Uh, the same for Ismail Mohammed and the same for Johan Crickler, for example. Uh, so, so, Yes, I mean, it is something that we've spoken about. It is something that some of us have been striving to try and do at the SCA. Uh, not always very successfully, I must say. But Jeremy, isn't there a bit of a difference in, well, perhaps a big difference? You've got that whole circuit of appeals in, in the US. So you come up to the US Supreme Court. They also have fewer cases per year. They select much more carefully what they take. The levels of the briefs, which is really what's, what the arguments are, are just if you look at some of the great cases that have been done, exceptional. I think the answer might be somewhere between, in between. Um, sometimes, I mean, if you know, I, I refer to Gert Kutsia and 
if you look at Sydney or if you look at Johan uh, uh, van der Kost, uh, you often benefited from the exchange. I mean, some, you almost always came off second best, but the exchange often led to a more refined argument. The question is how to find the balance, and I think that that's correct. We, we probably should find a balance. But I, you know, I, I think given the extent of the records, and there, there, there's been a question of whether or not there should be an intermediate court between the SCA, so instead of full, court, uh, full courts of the provincial divisions, you have an intermediate court which will deal with the sort of extended records which are fact-based. We don't have that luxury, and very often when you deal with a, say, 40 volume or 60 volume, it's incredibly difficult to give people uh, a limited amount of time. But, but, but I, my, my, my sense is that the answer is somewhere in between. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean curtail debate. Yeah. I just meant that they couldn't identify that short period of mess up was to bring home something which might be helpful. Yeah. Then I, I think the new style of debate is indeed what it should be. Okay. Yeah. No, I, 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 I appreciate it. the point that you make about the optics as well. Yeah. Yeah. And certainly, uh, it, it's very expensive for litigants to get to that court. And if they are sitting at the back of the court, and if they have the sense that judges have a predetermined outcome, well, that doesn't do too much for confidence in the judiciary and the administration of justice. There, I accept that. There is, uh, you, you will recall some of the judges past and who remain unmentioned yet, who would just allow debate to go on and on and it slip slide all over the place and you'd be there for hours and, and I'd sit there counting to 100, 5,000 times because you just, you know, you want to get to the nub of it. So I, I think the time limits is really what you're suggesting, and if you have the time limits, no, between, no, no, I understand that. Okay.